Morgan. How y'all doing? It's good, great to see you, great to be back here and uh, see so many friends as I look out over the audience. It's always wonderful to come to the place that uh, Kimberly and I now call our second home, uh, Berlin. And uh, in particular to be with all of you. Thank you, Sigmar. That was an extraordinary address that you gave. And, uh, uh, a, a fantastic way to uh, set out uh, the agenda for this conference and not just the framework for this conference, but the framework for, I think, a lot of thoughtful work that we have to do on both sides of the Atlantic as we, as we learn from uh, what has happened. I have a couple of thoughts on that that I, uh, that I want to address uh, as I go through my remarks, but I thought that was an extraordinary speech, and thank you very much. By the way, I, uh, I, you know, as Sigmar mentioned, he and I were communicating quite a bit through Zooms. We did a lot of tag teams for different organizations, uh, our organizations, the uh, uh, German Marshall Fund, even, uh, even Capital Group, my, uh, my company. And uh, basically, we look the way we do now. The difference is, I don't know, I can't speak for Sigmar, but I was like this at the top, but had gym shorts on. Uh, <laughs> getting ready to play tennis afterwards. <laughs> but uh, you're all grateful, I think, that I didn't bring that outfit here today. Uh, and Clark, what a wonderful pleasure it is to uh, be back with you. Clark and I worked closely together during my time as ambassador. And as Zygmar so appropriately noted, uh, both the United States and Germany were really, really lucky to have you in the position that you were in during this time and uh, an extraordinarily smooth uh, transition and steady leadership uh, during a time of transition. So I want to thank you for that. But in particular, on behalf of all the Americans that are here, I want to thank you for getting the president to drop that crazy rule that we all have PCR tests before we came back in the United States. It was very nice of you to get that done for our trip. Uh, anyway, I also want to um, thank the ACG and Atlantic Brooka teams uh, and all the work that you've done in putting together this wonderful conference. Uh, and uh, it's great to see so many board colleagues from the American Council in Germany who are here. Uh, do you all want to stand up just to show your presence? The uh, folks that are here from the board of the American Council of Germany flew in. Yeah, that's pretty good turnout. Thanks, guys. And uh, of course, our extraordinary president and CEO, Steve Sokol, uh, who you'll be hearing from later. And I also want to welcome Julia Freelander, who is herself a personification of the transatlantic relationship and, uh, and just starting as the CEO of Atlantic Brooka. And look forward to working closely with you as, as well. And, uh, and so glad you were here. And Oliver, Oliver Beta. I, yeah, you can clap for Julia, and now you're going to get to clap for Oliver. I, I'm going to introduce you in a couple of minutes, but I wanted to also echo Zygmar's thanks to you and your colleagues from Allianz uh, for having us here for last night. We had a small dinner last night up on the top, which was really fun. It was a view that the U.S. ambassador doesn't get to see that often. But I will tell you, being in this space, this place, which is uh, next to the Brandenburg Gate, across from the U.S. Embassy. Uh, it's a space that feels like home uh, for any former American ambassador, and it's just really great to be here as well. So thank you so much for that. While our organizations were founded together 70 years ago, the challenges that we face today, from COVID to the Russian war on Ukraine to our changing climate, to ongoing threats to democracy and our shared values that we see across the globe, all those threats underscore the continuing importance of the transatlantic partnership. And specifically, none of these challenges that we face can be effectively addressed without Germany and the United States working together. And I, I, I just wanted to note, Zygmar, in terms of your comment about uh, what we've learned about the uh, effectiveness of, of Vondel der Kandel over the years, where it, for a period of time it was very effective and then for a period of time it was not. Uh, let's be honest, we made that same judgment and had a similar experience in the United States as it related to engagement with China. And, uh, and I think that, you know, as we 
go through this conference and we go through our work, it makes sense for us to think a little bit about the fact that um, perhaps a, not a liability so much, but uh, a reality of those of us who are engaged in thoughtful, values-based policy making is maybe to think that everybody else in the world sees the world the way we do, and everybody else thinks the way we do. And, and I think it's pretty clear that we have, uh, as you noted, uh, with regard to Russia, and I think we see the same thing with regard to China, that there are very, very different perspectives on what is in a national interest, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and we need to be quite hard-headed in thinking this through. And the difference between democracies and values-based governments and transparent systems with free uh, press and an opportunity to hold us up and, 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 and scrutinize policymakers and decisions, the difference between that and authoritarian regimes is that we engage in the kind of uh, exercise that Zygmar was talking about. We do look at ourselves, whether it's Germany now thinking about the effectiveness of Vondel Dirk Handel or the United States going through the January 6th hearing that we are now engaged in or rethinking as we did uh, during the presidential election in 2008 and the aftermath of that, the effectiveness of our war in Iraq. So, you know, I think it's very dangerous and we see a lot of this um, uh, 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 false equivalency that particularly comes out of Vladimir Putin and others. Eh, what we're doing here is no different from what you guys do there. That is a false equivalent, equivalency. It is very, very different. And we do think about it, reflect, try to get better constantly. And that is an important aspect of not just uh, defending and protecting, but uh, expanding upon and reinforcing the, uh, the transatlantic relationship and the values-based uh, relationship that we all share. So I just, wanted to, I just wanted to add that to your extraordinary comments. Now we heard a bit about the public opinion poll. It's being released in conjunction with our conference. And I find it encouraging that our poll, as well as a recent Kerber Pew, Pew poll, indicate a strengthening of the transatlantic relationship. According to the Pew Kerber poll, which is done every year, the percentage of our citizens who today characterize the German-American relationship as being in really good shape tripled from polls that were taken just two and three years ago. And a plurality of Germans today now see the United States as their preeminent ally. And by the way, this, was, this poll was in the field, not, not ours, but the one that uh, the Kerber Pew, Pew poll was in the field before uh, the war in Ukraine started. Of course, we've all seen how quickly this can change. Zygmar gave an illustration of that in his conversation with his counterpart, uh, uh, the uh, Secretary of State of the United States a couple of years ago. But I do take some real hope for the future of our relationship because younger respondents in both countries absolutely believe that the best days are ahead of us for the transatlantic relationship. It's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Oliver Beta is the CEO and chairman of the board of Allianz, the world's number one leading insurance brand and a 150 billion euro financial services provider. Although, I don't know, given the way the markets have been working, maybe it's down a little bit. Uh, exactly. As such, he leads more than 155,000 employees in more than 70 countries, offering services to over 125 million customers. I mean, just get your head around that. Allianz is the insurance market leader in Germany, insuring one in four German households, including the Emersons with their place in Berlin. Under Oliver's leadership, the company consistently gains recognition for its systemic integration of environmental and social criteria into its business processes, making it the insurance industry leader on the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And to position his company for the future, Oliver has accelerated the power of collaboration within and outside Allianz. He views long-term partnerships as instrumental 
for Allianz's sustainable growth, and for delivering positive change in the world. And in addition to being a crucial Atlantic Brooka member, Oliver plays a key role in important alliances and public-private partnerships, frequently leading bilateral dialogues between Germany and other nations. A true transatlanticist, Oliver was educated in the United States and in Germany, beginning his career with McKinsey in New York. He has always been keen to look at the big picture, and because of his leadership on both sides of the Atlantic, Last fall, he was awarded the American Council of Germany's top prize, the John McCloy Award. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to our keynote speaker, Oliver Beta. <laughs> 